Greetings and salutations to all of our fine podcast audience. Look at us, guys. Look at us. On the audio podcast. On the audio <laughs> Look podcast. At <laughs> Look at us, all you are listening to us. We have a phoenix over <laughs> on my right shoulder right here. I'm, I'm holding a boa on. constrictor. Yeah. <laughs> So. But if you are watching on YouTube, <laughs> you know one you are, that was not true. That's yeah. right. And we're on a new set. Here we, we are. We are on a new set. We have comfy chairs. This I, is the community I feel Christian like I'm J- Jason's a king chair. I feel like I'm on a throne. If it, if it had swords in it, it'd be a little game of it, thrones. It's a big old chair. It's a it's big old chair, but it feels so comfy. I want to say I like my chair. Do you, you're sitting like an old man in it. Well. <laughs> it didn't matter where I sat. That's what I'd be sitting these days. There's no other way for me to sit these days. I, I, I'm happy that I'm the tallest one. Well, well, you have the biggest chair. I do. You're right in the I'm center. just so special. We could have lopsided it and I given know. it some. We could move. You know, the this stuff right week. here has a name for it. I used to know. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's pointing to the arm of the chair. It's uh, got all this stuff on it. If you know that what they call these. Uh, there is a specific title for that stuff they do on the hand. All the I'm designs. saying is, you need to get your hand off of my chair. Because <laughs> that's where my hands go. That's where his hands go. We I'm... do want to thank our friends at Furniture Refinishing <laughs> for <laughs> providing the, the furniture yes, for, yes. for our, our, our set. So we're upgrading. We're sitting here on a brand new set. Yeah, well, because we're getting close to episode 100. That's right. That's right. So we're so excited. We are. And, uh, we moved into a new space. Yeah, this is episode 98. We're trying out a little studio action. We are. Yeah. We are. Got books on the table. Look at us. Yep. Like we've ever read one. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, all right. So getting into... Uh, I'll just say this about those. Let me say something about books. All right, say something about the books. I want to say something about the books. Say something about your books. If, if anybody wants one of those books, uh-huh. if you can tell me which one you want, uh, you can have it. Okay. Because it, yeah. it don't need no books. I, I okay. don't need those anymore. Okay. That and tells you the quality of the books. No, they're <laughs> actually books? really good books. Actually, I picked I picked out really good books. This one is the best. Yeah, that's a really good book. I don't book. even know what the books are. No, I, I just read so much electronically now. Yeah. I don't, mm-hmm. so I'm willing to give away stuff okay. from my library. And so then we'll have to keep bringing in more books to put on the table to make us look scholarly. Yeah, yeah. I have I have a I have a book about this size that I knew nobody, it's the Lectures of Alexander Campbell. And oh wow. Most people don't even know who that is. <laughs> Look, that must be a fascinating read to get through. <laughs> yep. So And it wasn't required reading. I just got it back oh, in the day. Don't tell us that. You were trying to get bonus you points. Try, <laughs> you were trying to fill up a bookshelf. I was trying to figure out what those people meant. <laughs> they things. didn't know what they meant. <laughs> okay. All right. So on today's podcast, we are going to get in back into a discussion that we started a while back. We answered a few questions for the past couple of weeks, um, but we were having a discussion about how to read the Bible. Yeah, yep. because we feel that it is a misunderstood topic these days. Well, it's causing so many people problems. Yes. I think uh, even people who are. I think there are a lot of people in the church that haven't read. I find that out every time I do discipleship. I'll just say this. I have found that most men, Mm. even Christian men in our church, they haven't spent much time in the Bible. Mm. And when you begin to read the Bible, one, you're fascinated. You learn lots of things you didn't know. And you're surprised by some of the things that are in there. And if you don't understand how to interpret them, it can really be a problem for you. Oh, yeah. Well, it isn't the issue, too, even if I don't ever read the Bible... Uh, because of the internet now, and this is what we've talked about before, there is so much, I don't want to necessarily say misinformation because it's technically stuff that's in the Bible, but because the context is it's missing, pulled out of context. It, is, it is portrayed in a misinforming light. And yes. so it can be very damaging to uh, people's faith or to their understanding of God uh, because they think, well, this thing right here says it's in the Bible. Then I looked it up. It is in the Bible. Oh no, what do we do? Because we kind of have this idea of all uh, fake news or false news is someone just made it up. Mm -hmm. But there's an ability where, because I didn't understand how to read this Mm -hmm. properly, it is in there. Well, the way we taught it a lot and the way that we, the way people have understood it to be, of I ought to be able to pick it up. Christians ought to be able to understand it. Everything I need to know in there, it's all. Uh, from God, it's inspired by God, and because it's inspired by God, I have to take it literally. I have to take it the way it, uh, a plain reading of it in English, mm. and everybody ought to be able to get it because God wants us to understand it. And it's misunderstanding. Just that idea 
that because it is inspired, I believe it's inspired. Me too. I believe that God is yeah. at work in this, but I also got, believe humans were at work in this. So yeah. I think it's a the way I would talk about it is, and the way that it's talked about in the book we're referring to. I should have brought the book in here. Yeah. Uh, is that it's a human and divine book. It's a divine right. and human book. God didn't just. I, I'll just tell you, when I first heard that it was inspired, when I first became a Christian, because I don't think that got taught to me when I was growing up. I don't think anybody used those words, it's inspired. I had I had the idea that it was authoritative from God. Yeah. Whether anybody said it's inspired, I don't, I don't remember ever hearing that, but when I became a Christian, that was a big deal. It's inspired the inspiration all of it. Of scripture. The inspiration of Scripture is a big deal. And the way it came in my mind was, and I wouldn't have... It almost was like God took over a man's body right. hmm. and the words just sort of magically came out of the man onto a piece of paper hmm. and it was God speaking directly through this man and the man didn't have much control over it. Mm -hmm. But that's not what I currently understand. In fact, what I found out is really no scholar, not no, most no. scholars no. don't think mm -hmm. that's, that's not what they mean when they say it. Yeah. But I have met many people that feel exactly the way I felt. That's what they think it means. I will say this. You just reminded me of something, and we've mentioned it on this podcast before, but uh, we have all uh, watched that uh, series of, of t the TV series, The Chosen, about yeah. the life oh, of Jesus. Yeah. And there is an episode in that, um, I can't remember if it's season one or season two, where it gives you a little bit of a clue of how John might have decided. Oh to yeah, write, I love that. You know, oh, yeah. you, might, you know the episode I'm talking mm -hmm. about. There's an episode where he's he's sitting down trying to come up with just the right words to say. Yeah. He's talking to all the people who were involved. He talks to Mary and he talks to all the you know, and he's having these conversations. We don't know if that actually ever no. happened, but the way that they portray him trying to tell the story of Jesus to the audience he's telling it to. That, to me, was a better picture of inspiration. Well, you know, right. even more out of that show that I've actually seen, and there's a we may be able to link to a YouTube mm -hmm. discussion from the creator of the show with some theologians that were mm -hmm. consultants on the show. Yeah. Um, and he's got like an uh, Anglican and a Catholic and a, a Protestant. He's got a, uh, um, uh, I think he's a uh, Messianic Jew mm -hmm. who's in the whole mix that they're having these... Um, conversations about but one of the scenes is Jesus preparing for his sermon and he's mm. he is rephrasing the Sermon on the Mount yes. as yeah. he's going where he goes mm, that's not the best way to say that and that scene has been so controversial yeah. and they talk about the controversy that people say well Jesus because these this is actually God in flesh mm -hmm. he just knows what he needs to say and his point was we know that Jesus grew in knowledge and wisdom that's right. And that as he grew, so it may very well be possible. And and they even say in the thing, no one really knows. So it's not the point of, um, well, Jesus had to do it this way or Jesus could have just come up mm -hmm. with it on the spot. Um, but I think the important part of it is to see, and he even got somewhere, him and Matthew were kind of picking parts of, oh, that teaching should go here. And that mm -hmm. even is very controversial to people. But it would make sense to me that Jesus, in his human nature, uh, he is... He is developing the just like any of us do with sermons. You write something, mm -hmm. and I believe I believe as I preach things that I go, oh, I think God led me to say. Oh that yeah, sometimes. yes, absolutely. That there are things yes. I say that I would say are inspired mm -hmm. by God, but they come through my unique experience, mm -hmm. my perspective, and still with that, I go back and do a rough draft, and then I do another, and I go, oh no, this phrasing is better. It doesn't mean that the concept. That either God ins inspired for me to speak, or that God obviously through Jesus is inspiring him to speak. That that somehow is taken away from what God's inspiration is. Mm -hmm. It's that God, it, just like He does in every aspect of life, is partnering that's, with human beings. I think that's to do the important it. thing to remember about this idea of, illustra of uh, inspiration. Inspiration is it is exactly in keeping with the way God made the world. When God makes the world and He makes human beings. He decides to partner with human beings. Mm -hmm. At the moment, he says to them, you're going to have dominion over this. Well, ultimately, he has dominion. Sure. But he, he gave that to, he let them name the animals, mm -hmm. uh, that whole kind of thing. It's God partnering. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about preaching. I, you know, I have always felt that, that when you're writing, or particularly for me, it's more, it happens sometimes when I'm speaking, 
I'll change a little bit of the way I even re- wrote it, and I can tell in the moment, oh, God was in that. Yeah, yeah. that was in that, All in the, the moment. And um, the way my preaching professor, that I took everything I could from him, I don't know whether he said it or he wanted us to memorize it, but I've never forgotten it. He said preaching is the heart of God through the heart of a man to the heart of people. Mm. It's it's taking God's heart through your heart, so it's going to come out in your personality. That's right. In fact, we've all taught similar things. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. In fact, we've taught the same passage. <laughs> we've taught almost the exact same concepts, but because we... I've actually taught one of your messages I, I, one time when you went to the hospital. That's right. I, I went in for a gallbladder <laughs> surgery <laughs> on, on a Friday, and Jason had to grab my notes and do my yep. notes, but it... When I heard it, I told him, I said, I think that was better than the way I would have done it because it came through his personality. Yes. God's, God's heart through my heart, through Jason's heart, yeah. the heart of people. Yeah. And that's the way I see inspiration. And if you don't get that, you'll miss a big part of when we say the Bible is written to you but not for you. You have to understand since it was written through first century you, you, people. You switch that. Switch oh, that the, God, the Bible is written... For, for you, you, but not, not to, to you. you. That's right. Yes. It was written from first century people or sometimes people before the first century of uh, the Old Testament. It's written in their culture by people in their culture. So since it's not written to me, yeah. I have a little bit of work to do yeah. to get to it. It's not impossible work for me to do, no. but I have to do it or I will okay. mess it up and uh, I'll think yeah. that the words mean to me what they ought to always mean. I, we were talking mm-hmm. about this before, and the way I think of it is the way I grew up in the South and only ever experienced the South. I'm a Mississippi guy. Uh, and when I went to the North, which they thought they were the South, Northern Kentucky, Cincinnati, <laughs> they're clearly not. They are not. <laughs> they're clearly not. No, sir. And uh, I ordered in Kentucky... Uh, I said, they, what do they have? I said, I want grits with my eggs. And they said, okay. They didn't ask any questions about that. And when I said grits, I knew what I meant. I know what grits are. And they brought me something that turned out to be cream of wheat. Mm. And if you ain't ever had it, it's ain't something, grits. but ain't it grits. ain't grits. No, sir. Yeah. Same thing's true when I first ordered tea. When I ordered tea in Kentucky and somebody said to me, you want sweet or unsweet, I'm like, I don't understand that question. <laughs> I mean, what, what is that question? I said yeah. tea. Yeah. Tea is sweet and it's cold. Yes. I don't want it. I mean, you know, I don't want it hot. <laughs> right. I want it really that's sweet right. and I want, to, I want it cold. Well, that's the way it happens for us. We read the scripture sometimes because it's now over 2,000 years old, mm-hmm. 2,000 years a culture removed. You read a word and because it's been translated into English for you, which the translators help us a lot. They do. Oh, they're, sure. they're trying to help us get it into our current. If you've ever read one of those Bibles that they call the literal Bible, mm-hmm. you'll know that. Because oh, there yeah. are Bibles that will yeah. literally translate the word for word, word and for word. You, you won't understand it. You can't hardly read it. You can't. Yeah. And that doesn't mean they're doing some violence. No, they no, are. No, 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 no. They're doing the same work that we do mm-hmm. when we, we teach the Bible to you. They're... They're, they're trying to march across some centuries for you yeah. to get you to a place where you can understand what it means. And if you don't, you will read things that clearly meant something in the first century, and it will get to the place that it begins to do a lot of damage uh, to you, to the way you see God, to the way you treat other people. Mm-hmm. And you'll miss the plain reading of Scripture because you thought it was written to you, not yeah. for you. And so when you say that um, Bible reading is going to take some work, I, I, I think that's so important to say because uh, I've had this conversation with someone before as they, they've come up to me after being in a church service where the Bible was taught by me or anyone, and they would say something like, I wish that I was able to just read the Bible and get what I just got out of the Bible that you read and explained to me. What I always try to explain to them is what you just experienced is not an inferior experience to you sitting down and reading it. It it is the experience that God meant for us to have when yes. he when he inspired his word. You know, people will say, "Well, you got all this 
you know, schooling, and I wish I understood the background the way you do. And when I come to church, I understand it so well. And I go, see, that's that's the point. That's what God was wanting us to do was interpret, to discuss, to learn as a community, to then pull what He was saying through His servants out to us so that we might fully understand it. The Bible, and really, unless we've said this before, all of spiritual life was not meant to be done alone in a vacuum. That's right. It is not a book intended to be read by itself, I mean, yeah. by yourself. Well, and I think it's important, to, as you're saying, too, because I think this ends up happening, too. Our, with, our, with, with education, with speaking, our interpretation is not a superior interpretation, right. and it sometimes gets puffed up that way. That's and right. I'll just say this to someone who speaks. Maybe you guys have experienced it. There are times I'm tempted to think that. That oh, I go man. through something yes. and I go, I wish everyone just could understand. Because I'm trying to teach. I'm trying sure. to teach. And there's this thought that comes in. goes, if everyone could understand it, mm. like I understood it, then everything would be better. And mm. then I read someone who's smarter than me and I go, oh, if I could just understand <laughs> yeah, it. The way like, they understood. understood it. And then I understand. And I think this is the important part of what you just said. And I think this is what's missed on most people. And I believe it's Stanley Howard that I heard say this. But it actually is all um, comes from Diedrich Bonhoeffer, a lot of these ideas is that the point of scripture and even what Jesus is doing is uh, to create a people, not a person, mm -hmm. a people, and the way he says it is, who makes the story of Jesus intelligible. And what he means is that we become the kind of people, and you mentioned this in your uh, message at this point a few weeks back about do something, that it's not the story of the resurrection that was so powerful to people. It was this group of people that could only be explained by a resurrection, that the way they lived, and I heard, and I remember reading Diedrich Bonhoeffer talk about the Sermon on the Mount, that we often read the Sermon on the Mount as this is how a person should live. And his point is Jesus is saying how the community of God yes. should function. Yeah. The only way, turn the other cheek, or... Uh, don't lust or the the commands about anger with a because once again he talks about a brother or sister and we often have this kind of like I call it the 1960s hippie movement everyone's my brother or right. sister mm -hmm. but when Jesus says brother or sister he specifically means people in the in the family of faith yeah. he specifically means your interactions with one another mm -hmm. it's saying if a community could operate with this kind of uh, enemy love which obviously means me as an individual has to well, sure. operate that way sure. but the idea was never that you alone in your world would personally be the light mm -hmm. it would be that all of us together in the way that we love and serve and so to say all of that is to say the point of having teachers and preachers and people and theologians and, and scholars to help us get this is not that you personally would understand the scripture better but that we as a community could be formed into people who when we live our lives and live as a community, people would look and say, wow, there must be a risen Savior because that community doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And so we do need people in our community who go off to school, and that's the role they play. They, mm -hmm. get a, they, they have a certain level of thing. Yeah. But you also need to be in the scriptures and understand. You know, all of that is a part. So, yeah. as you said, yes. neither one's inferior or superior. That's right. And we, and we need it for the opposite reason as well. We need other people to keep us from misinterpreting. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, because right. that's an issue. Now, I think, I think we're going to get into this uh, toward the end of our discussion here today, but there are so many passages of Scripture that people will read and then a lot of times they'll throw out YouTube videos and, you know, I have discovered this new meaning of this verse and, and oh, get a sure. whole bunch of people to follow them. And what's the problem is, is they are devoid of a community that, that stops them and goes, now hold on a second. Right. You didn't just get that. Right. There's no way that let's look at history. Let's look at what. Let's look at how this jives with the rest of Scripture. Right. This can't be the interpretation that's right. correct. You know. So we need it on both sides. Oh, absolutely. To understand the Scriptures correctly and to to stop misinformation from running rampant in the church. And a big part of that is me being willing to submit myself to a community. Yes. Right. And it's it's been one of the biggest problems I think. I think for all of us is 
to see that God, I have a personal relationship with God, but a part of that relationship I have with God was to bring me into a community. Right. It does not, my relationship with God is not complete if I don't have a community of other followers around me. Yeah. He intended it to be that way. Yeah. Uh, it, I, yeah. it must be. I have, I have, and I don't want to get too specific, but I, I have friends that I know who have, gone off and decided that, you know, church isn't for me or whatever, but they're still really into the Bible. And they're really still into, I want to study and I want to know God. And I will just say, as a general rule, not always, but as a general rule, those people who who divorce themselves or separate themselves from the community of faith are the ones that I often go back and I'll hear of some loony kind of belief that has crept into their faith that I, I cannot even fathom how they came to it, but it almost always is because there was nobody there to say, hey, now come on, really? Do you yeah. think really that's what God was saying when he well, said Well, and you have to ignore some pretty plain teaching that you don't have to get very deep on to think that somehow God wants me mm-hmm. to pull away from community. True. Oh, yeah. It's hard to read... Forsake not the assembly of yourselves together Mm -hmm. and think, you know what he's talking about, me and my wife, Mm -hmm. me and my kids. That's what he's talking about. I'm not going to forsake eating dinner with my kid. You've got to really wrangle that and how do I serve? Are are you really an enemy with your wife and you're going to love her in that way? You know, you have to take plain reading and search for deep reading to get to something that says, I can have church by myself. Yeah. Well, and it misses, once again, the point of what Jesus is trying to do. And we, and we have, this is where, and, and we talk about this a lot from, from the stage when we preach, but also I know we've talked about it on here a lot, that it takes faith in Jesus to being something I believe. And mm-hmm. what I mean by believe is I intellectually yeah. assent to, yeah. that, I, that it's, a, it's a terms and a conditions thing, and I don't even have to read the whole thing, I just got to check the box and then I'm good, that... Ultimately, as long as my, as long as I still hold the same what we would call orthodox beliefs, and I'm off on my own, then I'm fine. Or maybe my wife is my enemy, and I love her, and I'm and I'm practicing it there, and so that's all okay, and I'm fine. But that's not what Jesus is calling me to do. Jesus is calling me into a new family, a new community. That everything Jesus calls me to do is going to lead me back to the body of believers and we miss that so much because we should love everyone always as we say which includes everyone who's even who's not a believer i should love my neighbor but nearly all of the one one another commands that are written are written about believers to believers and so when we read them as just well i need you know respect one another or greet one another with a holy kiss i gotta just go start greeting everybody i know and and that was and i know holy kiss parts gross but well it needs interpretation well it does but even in that community he wasn't saying go greet everyone you meet with a holy kiss he meant these brothers and sisters in this community I'm, God is trying to create a community of resurrection people, of new creation people, of redeemed kingdom people who live in such a way among their neighbors and their coworkers who aren't believers. Well, there, there's so many people I know that, that believe the right things, and there is nothing about their life that demands explanation. Right. Their life doesn't look significantly different in any way. I mean, not in the way they handle money, not in the way they treat people that they don't like. Not There's nothing about their life that if someone watched close enough and looked close enough would say, now why do you do that odd thing? They look enough like everybody else, mm-hmm. but Jesus is forming a people yeah. that when mm-hmm. I commit to be a part of a group of people, that when people see me with people that I wouldn't normally be with, they would go, okay, that doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, he loves that person that's nothing like him, doesn't even believe like him, not necessarily do the things he does. They don't have a natural affinity for Mm -hmm. one another. Mm -hmm. It begins, that's what Jesus is trying. The resurrection is not something I believe and then I just try to get everybody to believe it because it frankly doesn't make sense to people. But it does become the reason for why I do 
what I do. Everything else. Yeah. And it becomes part of that narrative that then I see I see a lot of people, and I, just because it's who I've worked with the longest time here, a lot of young people who really get it, and they decide not only Jesus matters to me, but his church matters to me. These believers matter to me. And when they start taking stands on that, and I don't mean stands about what they believe, which is what most of us think of stands for. Yeah. Things. When they go to mom or dad and say, hey, I know that there's this family Christmas thing that's happening at this time, but the church is doing this thing. Like we had students who would say, we're going to go do Christmas in Coweta. That matters to me. I'm going to do this because this is what the church is doing. Or when we had Thanksgiving meals, mm -hmm. we had our things. I'm going to go serve at this, and I'll still show up, to, but I'm going to be late to this thing. Mm -hmm. Families then, get upset. Families get And then you And I remember telling them, they said, I feel bad because i got to honor my mom. I said, you are honoring your mom. You're still showing up to the thing. You're still saying you matter to me, but you are clearly taking a stand to say, I am with Jesus, and I am with what I feel like the church is doing, and I feel called to this body of believers, and they have asked me to do this, so I'm going to do this thing. And obviously, you can't do everything, but when you choose to take a stand and you say this is a thing, that now becomes a narrative that someone has to explain. And sometimes what families do is they explain they don't care about us. They don't. They, they choose anything over us. But sometimes... It wasn't anything. I yes. didn't choose anything. anything. I chose someone. But occasionally... I chose a group of people who follow Jesus. Occasionally I had parents who said, and they would come to me and say, at that moment I realized, and they said, I think they're, they're willing to take stands for their faith that I wouldn't. And I, and I thought, and I remember okay. talking to one student about it, is, and now you're being a witness, mm -hmm. even to someone who's a believer, and challenging them to move forward. And once again, it's not about the specific issue. It's about this idea of saying, this is the community that I have been called to be a part of. And many of us are blessed in that uh, our families get to be a part of our family of God, and we get to do those things together as a family. But I know, and probably many of you watching, you have battles like that in your family, maybe with a spouse, maybe with kids, or maybe you're a kid and it's with parents, of where where does my allegiance lie on these things? But that becomes a witness to the only thing that makes that sense is at least mm -hmm. I believe that there's something happening here. Yeah. That now becomes something that me means more than me taking a, a stand on Facebook about my po political beliefs. <laughs> uh, because everyone does that. It's yeah. not just Christians. Well, it's been very that. interesting to me. You, you, you know, when you just said the thing about political, it hit me automatically. I do know people in the last two years that have been willing to leave their family over politics. Yes. Mm. Which clearly said to me, oh, there is a high value for you. Isn't there? Right. Yeah. There are higher values. There are people you, you don't see anymore that but, you would have called close people in your life. And but, because and of it always, it has to be explained to me. When mm -hmm. they take a stand like that, mm -hmm. okay, all right, I don't get that. I certainly wouldn't have taken that stand. Mm -hmm. But at least your life demands an explanation now. Yeah. Well, when we, <laughs> and we now know something about you that I we didn't do, before. I do know something that I didn't know before. Yes. That, that is a really, really high value for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so... I know, I know that we're coming to close to the time we like to end these and not get well, them too long. Yeah. And um, I, I know you had a question. You, do you want to get to that or you want to hold it over and let's talk about it next time? Yeah, and, I, and I, it, it goes back to a point I made earlier of uh, this idea of when we start to um, see the Scripture the way we've been describing it um, and we begin to interpret it within community with one another in its context and all of those kinds of things, we draw that out from, of one another, um, it keeps us from error. It does. And, and I had somebody uh, that I think is experiencing this in their life. They had, and they, they, they didn't send it as a question. They, it was more of a, an email to me just saying, I don't know what to make of this. And, um, a concern about a family a member. A concern especially. about a family member who had, had brought up something that they read in the scriptures and they had become convinced of. And they said, how do I convince them that they're wrong about that? Because in the specific the belief was that, that there was a family member that had, after reading the book of Revelation, which is a hard book to understand, yeah, sure. had come to the conclusion that somehow this mark of the beast thing that we've talked about here before that you know you cannot take it's it's a rebellion against god they had decided somehow that the mark of the beast is the covid vaccine mm -hmm. and so that here's a believer who, who now believes they are 
irrevocably headed toward hell because they because did, they did take yeah. the vaccine and now they convinced themselves through reading the Bible that the mark of the beast was in the, the COVID vaccine. So now I'm doomed to hell. And they said, I'm so concerned for this person. I love them. I want to help them not to feel this way. And I don't know what to do. And Certainly. and I and it brought me back to this discussion that we've been having of. Yeah, me too. You know, I feel so bad for the person because one, you know, you know what you know immediately about this person is they take a very high view of the scripture. They've tried yes. to look at this and they've tried to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And, but the unfortunate part is they haven't done, and they may not have the tools to do it. I, like you said, I think Revelation, some of the books of prophecy in the Old Testament are among the hardest to walk from, through the centuries because they're just a different genre. We, other than maybe graphic novels, we don't have anything that really does what apocalyptic literature was trying to do. Which yeah. is what so, Revelation is. So, Revelation is apocalyptic literature, and when you try to read it as if it's just straight words on a page, you're not really doing, you're not getting the clear meaning of the scripture, because mm -hmm. he was trying to say something pretty plain that people would have gotten because of the way he wrote. Mm -hmm. He was giving them clues of what it was, yes. what it was yeah. all along, but you miss it, and I feel bad for the person because they've got themselves in a wrench. So if they were sitting across from me, I think where I would start just, and I have had this discussion with people about other things with the mark of the beast, is inevitably what I wind up hearing people is your interpretation of scripture is putting God in a place that I bet you don't believe. Hmm. Mm. You And so you need to hear what you're saying about God. Mm -hmm. And what I hear you saying about God is God is the kind of person that is looking for a way that you could be tricked out of going to be with him. Yeah. That he has set up a system that is so tenuous that I could accidentally that I could accidentally with with good intentions. Mm -hmm. I mean the best of intentions. God is the kind of father that sets traps around the house hoping his children will will get trapped by them. Mm. And I don't think anybody would say that. I don't right. think most people would say that about Not that. a person that takes this high view of the scripture. So you have to go, it does appear like way he thinks, or that she thinks, or whoever this, I can't remember, I read the email, but I can't remember, is that God is the kind of person that he set this law, and all he cares about is whether I trip, the, I trip over the law or not. Not that I accidentally fell over it, that I didn't know it was there, M minus even getting to the mark of the beast part, that, yeah. I, that, I don't even have to get to that. I just get to the heart of the way you're saying about God is God is a being, He's a person who almost is sitting back with a grin on His face, going, well, "Let's see how they handle this," and not and they make it so ambiguous and unplain that that only just a few people could ever figure right. it out. That right. that just doesn't seem to fall in line with the nature of, of, of who God is. Well, and I think it becomes, and this does loop back to what we were talking about before, that there are superior and inferior readings of the scripture because a, a highly elevated view, because this view, what it really comes to is there are superior readings of the scripture that come from an, a, the ability to really nuance out mm -hmm. and because potentially a person who was really highly educated on context could figure out there was a secret thing and this is how it implies... But that isn't what even the Apostle John is doing when he's writing Revelation. He is using this apocalyptic language that these people could understand. But he's writing to communities about things that they're going through yep. for the point, once again, of creating a people who can withstand any circumstance, any circumstance that might put them at a place where they have to pick an allegiance between Jesus and anything else. That's, it can be anything that's else. That's really it. It's Jesus yes. and anything. And yeah. so what he's saying is, and he's using specific examples, but really for us, once again, it's not written to us, but it's written for us, all of that. Mm -hmm. The way that applies is, okay, the specific context of what was actually happening probably, it may help me understand the overall principle, but if I can, if I understand the view of God, I understand this is really about, am I choosing to align myself with anything? Am I, am I pledging my allegiance to anything other than Jesus and his kingdom and his, his community? That that is my highest allegiance uh, 
if I'm not doing that, then I'm not in danger of taking the mark of the beast. If I am not, if I am not saying this really is what matters to me. Now, is it possible that there are things in my life for all of us that are in the realm of being a tempting, a temptation of a mark of the beast esque thing? That there are things that I I am choosing to align myself with over Jesus. Absolutely. But the truth is, I'm probably aware of them because whatever it is I'm choosing to do is taking me away of something. Yeah. That Jesus would want me to mm-hmm. do. That's so it's right. not confusing when I do it. Now I may not sit and think this is the mark of the beast and this is me <laughs> pledging my allegiance to something other than Jesus. But in but I know it. I know when I do this thing, this is not what Jesus would want. I know me to I'm do at it. least not following Jesus fully. Yeah. I know that I'm not following him fully. And let's be real clear: up until just a few hundred years ago. Uh, that way of interpreting the book of Revelation right. didn't even exist. That's right. That idea of I'm looking around for the signs in my generation to, to link them up with every little image that I find in Revelation, that is a really new way of reading that book. So whenever you choose that type of a reading, uh, you're, you're not standing on a, a footing that has lasted very long right. at all. And that's a part of reading the Bible in community is I'm reading in the community of history of Christians yeah. who, I mean, we do have a long period of time that people who, I know you feel like we are somehow smarter in the 21st century, and in some ways we are in that we have newer things, but these people really dug into the Word. They were closer to the culture. Yeah. They had better ways of understanding that. We have to do a lot of work to get to where they were, and, and people didn't interpret it that way. Mm-mm. Yeah. No. Well, there was, let's remember, there was a generation who read the original writings of John that knew exactly what that was yeah. because it did correlate directly yeah. to something going on in their culture in that time. And then as the generations passed, we lost that context. Yeah. And so now people are trying to reach back and grab it. And they're and instead of reaching back and finding the meaning, they're often going, let me put some stuff in my backpack mm-hmm. and carry it back there. Yeah. True. Yeah. This meant a helicopter. And this meant a vaccine. <laughs> That's right. And this meant a tank. Yeah. Well, you have to put those in your backpack and, and haul them back. back several centuries yeah. to think that they meant that. Yeah. And it's just, and again, you were talking about the original hearers, and that's the way we have to think about it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Nobody, when John wrote the book of Revelation, except, I mean, they didn't have copies of the scripture. Mm-hmm. They weren't sitting having daily quiet times because <laughs> it didn't exist that way. They would come together in a community. Someone would stand up and read the book of Revelation to them. Mm -hmm. And someone who had been trained to tell them what John meant would tell them what John meant. Mm -hmm. Well, and even even you go back 300, 400 years ago and you have Martin Luther saying we need to translate all these things in different languages. Even all of those people in their own languages weren't able to read. It really is. That's a relatively new concept, this idea that I personally would have this private just me and Jesus alone time with my Bible doesn't mean that we shouldn't all be reading the Bible, but it's a new concept because ultimately everyone did rely on, I'm going to read this in a community. Yes. That's not, that I'm going to have it, and even if I can read it, I'm still going to read alongside with the people of God, and we're going to work this out, and that ultimately we're going to work out together what does this mean in my community. I have that. I know you guys probably have that experience. I listen to pastors from all over the country, even some in other countries that are teaching on things, but even those occasionally, I have to remind myself, oh, he's speaking to a people in London, mm-hmm. and though there's truth in what he's saying, there's that, that he is pastoring to these people yes. about what they do, because there's sometimes I go, ooh, that'd be a great thing to teach our people, and I go, but that mm-hmm. that's not where anyone in Atlanta, no. that's not where anyone in Coweta County is. Yeah. And there are, there are pastors in Atlanta that I listen to, and I go, man, that's a great illustration. Nobody in, in Coweta County no. would relate to no. that because we know Coweta County and Atlanta aren't the same They're community. Different. And They're so different it's just different. And so it's the idea of taking all of that, history, mm-hmm. context, all those things, and saying, within my community and this context, can we together work out how to be these people? And so the big thing I would want people to get, and we, we'll come back to this, I'm sure, is... You need to be aware when you're reading the scripture. And so I would say to this person, I'll come back to the guy about the mark of the beast, is you need to be aware, not written to you, but is for you. And one of the biggest things, and it really requires humility on our part, is I must submit myself to 
the Bible and to the community of people that are helping me understand the Bible. Yep. I am not... I, private interpretations of the Scripture are exceptionally dangerous and were not the intent of it. Hmm. The second thing I'd want to say about that is almost every command you read in any of the letters of the New Testament, when it says you, it don't mean you. It means y'all. <laughs> yeah. It means... All y'all. Mm-hmm. It means the community of faith, and and really the Greek word almost has that it sense it's a to plural. It, it a doesn't plural. have singular you. But when we read it in the United States, twenty first century, particularly in the South, where we're all independent, we don't nobody telling us what to do. Mm-hmm. We read it as me. Yeah, <laughs> he's talking to me. No, he's talking to all y'all. Yeah, yes. So. That's what I would I would really hope that whoever this uh, was that uh, needs to help with their their family member, one I'd just pray for them. I'd encourage them. Maybe try to have the conversation of how do you think this shows God's character? Yeah. Because I don't. I bet they don't think about God the way it sounds like they think about God. Mm-hmm. Yes. And if you can get them to see that the way I'm viewing that scripture can't have possibly be what a God that is the one revealed in Jesus meant. It just can't it can't possibly be what he meant. And we've said that over and over again. Run everything that you read in scripture through the cross. Yep, Run yeah. it through the or put it through the lens of the cross. Is this revealed in the crucified Jesus, the Son of God? And if 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 it's not or if you've got some questions, then you're probably not reading it exactly as you probably think you are. You know, Jason, that, that last part you just said is such a good part, even with, particularly with this thing of I can accidentally take the mark of the beast. If I just take the cross mm-hmm. and I say, so the God who would allow himself to come be beaten and killed so that I could be with him also set up a system where I could accidentally be tricked in not being with him. Right. Yeah. Th- those don't match don't up. Match. So he did, he did everything he could mm. so that I could be with him. He bore the full weight of that and then set up a system where I could accidentally fall into a trap. Mm-hmm. I, and I can, That doesn't make sense to me. And I have to say, I, I, I sympathize with that view because that's the view I grew up with. Mm-hmm. And, and I've said that in my you know, telling of my story. I, I grew up in a system or a church that, that really did present... It, it, they, they presented both sides, and they never really sat down and saw those as contradictory. They talk about the love of Jesus and the sacrifice he made for us and how he came for us, and Christmas time we would, would celebrate that so much. And then the rest of the year, it was a lot of, you better be careful, and God's out to get you, and you might slip and fall, and, and, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. And, and, I, and I wrestled with this God for so long in my life, probably well into my 20s, until I finally really understood what the Bible meant when it talks about the love of God, yeah. the grace of God, the pursuit of God for me through history. And it, it, it took that conflict and just, it just made it kind of just melt away finally. And yeah. I saw everything completely different. I hope that's what this family member does as I well. I do too. So, We'll All be right. praying for you and them. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to come back next week. We're going to continue uh, this conversation, but we're going to do it through another question that someone sent, and we're going to ans- answer that. And uh, we'll be a little bit closer to Christmas, so we'll have some Christmas stuff next week. Wow. Um, we are still in the midst of Do Something. Yep, so, so you can go to CCC that. anywhere and contribute to Do Something. We're trying to help our RIP medical debt yep. uh, with a bunch of other organizations to maybe remove all the... Uh, debt in the state of Georgia that Ooh. has in a place where it's in collection, people are overweight with it, uh, they're at poverty level already and it's crushing them. We want to help with that. So that would be, be a great thing. You can contribute cool. to that. That would be cool. Yeah. And so we'll be back next week with the next uh, podcast episode. Well, we'll be on 99 next week. 99. 99. It'll, it'll drop 99. on Tuesday. So you guys tune in on Tuesday for that. And uh, we got family movie podcast coming up in two days. Two days. Another episode. Yeah. I don't remember which movie is coming up. I think up. this week uh, is Klaus. We are talking about Ooh, a, a Netflix original animated movie. So okay. most people have not seen it. Is it's, it Klaus like Claus? Claus? It is. It's a. It's like a. Uh, it's kind of like a reimagining of the origins of like the Santa Claus mythos. 
So it's a uh, it's but it's it's really fantastic. Uh, so we're, uh, it's right. a good episode. So subscribe to the podcast feed. You'll get all of that, and uh, it'll be right here on the YouTube channel if you're watching that as well. So all right, you guys have a great week. We will see you here next Tuesday. Bye bye.